A few weeks ago, I bought a hi-fi with a digital radio in it. I did a review of it, and during the course of that review, I commented about the terrible state of DAB, the digital radio standard here in the UK. A few people suggested that that part of the video should stand on its own as a separate video. So that's what we're watching now, the centre of that other video, where I just talk about what's wrong with DAB. After some earlier trials throughout the 90s, DAB was officially launched in the UK in the late 90s to much fanfare, but since then it hasn't gone on to become the success that was first anticipated. The intention was that over time everyone would migrate across to DAB and the FM broadcast would be shut down and that frequency spectrum would be sold off. Well, it's getting on for 25 years after those first broadcasts, and in the UK, FM radio stations are still broadcasting alongside the DAB ones. Over the years, many of those launch DAB stations disappeared, as the listenerships didn't quite match up to the initial expectations. No doubt, a couple of things that held back the adoption of DAB was the fact that the first radios that went on sale were really quite power-hungry due to all the processing circuitry, etc. So they could generally only be run from a wall power supply, or if you did find one that took batteries, it took a lot and it burnt through them very quickly. Additionally, we'd become used to paying a low price for an FM radio, and now all of a sudden DAB with its additional circuitry meant that the price of entry was considerably higher, and that stayed true to this day. Even when I bought a new car last year, DAB radio was an optional extra when FM was included as standard. I had to pay extra for digital radio. Another problem with DAB is that despite its early promises, it doesn't really sound all that good, in many cases worse than FM. Part of that is down to the fact that when it was launched in the UK, the codex standard was MPEG-1 Audio Layer 2, also commonly referred to now as MP2. Since then, DAB Plus was introduced, which uses a more up-to-date and efficient codec, and this has gone on to become more successful in some countries where they've effectively reset and relaunched DAB by completely switching over to the new standard. However, back in the UK, the vast majority of DAB stations are still broadcasting on the original 30 or so year old inefficient MP2 codec. The newer DAB Plus standard uses an AAC codec, which is considered to be twice as efficient. So you could use the same bitrate and get significantly improved sound quality. But going back to MP2, which is the standard most used in the UK, according to a BBC research and development document from 2003, they determined that this codec required a 256 kilobits a second bitrate to provide a high quality stereo broadcast. But you could reduce that down to 224 kilobits a second, which was described as adequate. However, reducing the bitrate down to 192 kilobits a second would start to introduce imperfections. Unfortunately, though, in the UK, the companies that have leased the multiplexes, rather than heeding that advice, instead decided to focus on squeezing as many stations as they could into the bandwidth they'd been allocated. And it's worse than just reducing the bitrate. According to this website, which lists the London DAB radio stations, it also goes into whether or not they're broadcasting in stereo. Believe it or not, a lot of these stations are mono, which you can perhaps get away with for spoken word. But there's some pop music stations in here that are broadcasting at like 64 kilobits a second in mono. If you've ever wondered why your DAB radio just sounds a little bit crappy, well, that's because it is. It's, I mean, it's MP2, for God's sake, at 64 kilobits a second in mono. That's appalling. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like DAB Plus is going to ride in on a white horse and save us from this situation. The AAC codec, with its increased efficiency, instead of being used to improve the sound quality with the same bitrate, they've used it to further lower the bitrate so they can squeeze even more stations into the same space. I mean, 24 kilobits a second AAC, yeah, that's going to sound really good, isn't it? The only positive I can put on DAB Plus is that I've noticed on the few stations I've got that have a really weak quality of signal, unlike the DAB stations, these ones don't break up. So yes, the signal on DAB Plus is definitely more robust. So that wraps up the section taken from the previous video regarding DAB, but just to finish this whole video off, I noticed the other day a number of regional radio stations in the UK are set for closure in favour of taking the national feed from that group instead. 
Of course, this means savings for the radio station, but also means that those local areas are going to lose their local news and local travel, but also there's job losses as those regional stations close down, and quite often those were the places where someone would start their career in radio and go on to bigger and better things, and those opportunities will now be lost. It seems like things are getting worse for radio here in the UK rather than better, which is a shame. Of course, people will say, well, just use internet radio or just stream things over your phone. And yes, all those options exist, but regional radio is still something that is useful to a great number of people. And it's a shame that we've entered into this situation where we're listening to mono low bitrate radio from a national broadcaster who's actually not doing so bad apparently dab is doing fine as far as finance goes they're just not spending the money on their own output but anyway that's it for the moment as always thanks for watching